Can Jean-Michel Steri be a positive impact at Jurgen Klopp's Liverpool? Hello everyone and welcome to the What If League. Today I'm doing an experiment. What if Liverpool signed Jean-Michel Seri from Nice? This is a player that uh, is currently uh, being speculated in the media that he's going to join one of the big teams in England uh, in the summer and uh, Liverpool is uh, one of the candidates for his signature. In this particular video I have transferred him in the middle of February to Liverpool for 35 million pounds. Because the transfer happened in the middle of February, this means that he is not going to be eligible to be uh, registered for the Premier League. He's probably not going to play any uh, or a lot of games until the end of the season, which could be a good thing because it's going to it's going to protect him from injuries. Now I'm going to fast forward until the end of the first season to see what happens with Liverpool and uh, whether Seri was actually able to play any games. And after that, I'm going to fast forward three more years into the future so that we can really judge how did he impact the team at Anfield. Alright, here we are, 2nd of June 2018 and Manchester City were champions with 86 points, which is 9 more than 2nd place Liverpool. So in this uh, scenario here, Liverpool managed to uh, jump ahead of Manchester United uh, in 2nd place and finish the season strongly. Manchester United and Chelsea completed the top 4. In the final game of the season, Liverpool uh, won against Brighton at home 2-0. Now let's have a look at Liverpool themselves and see how did they perform. Of course, Jurgen Klopp is the manager, captain is Jordan Henderson with vice-captain James Milner. Key player is Mohamed Salah, which is not really surprising. If we look at the tactics screen, we can see that they are employing a 4-3-2-1 uh, tactics with a defensive midfielder in, in Emre Can. Seri is not here, of course, because uh, he was most probably not eligible to play. Let's have a look at, uh, at him and uh, whether he actually played any games in that season. There he is. We can see that uh, he was registered to play in the Champions League, where he recorded one assist. He also played in the Europa League a lot. So apparently uh, Liverpool were eliminated from the Champions League and uh, played in the Europa League, where he played seven games, scored two goals and one assist. So it would be interesting to see how did, uh, how did the season evolve for Liverpool. Let's see their schedule. So this transfer happened in the middle of February. There it is. For some reason here we can see that uh, Liverpool were eliminated from from Champions League, which is uh, not true at all uh, compared to reality. I'm not sure why this happened. And uh, we can see that afterwards they played in the Europa League where they won against Sporting Lisbon in uh, the first knockout round. Then they eliminated Milan in the second knockout round. Afterwards they qualified on away goals uh, in the quarterfinals against Dynamo Kiev. They also won the semi-final against Arsenal only to lose the final on penalties against Napoli. So, a very interesting turn of events here. Mohamed Salah scored in the 11th minute only for Dries Mertens to equalize in the 53rd and afterwards in extra time. Amado Diavara put Napoli ahead only for Sadio Mane to return the, uh, the um, equilibrium in, in goal scored in the last minute of extra time. So, who missed their penalty? Oh, Jorginho Vinaldum was sent off in the 13th minute, so this probably did not make things easy for Arsenal. In the shootout, Roberto Firmino missed his uh, penalty and this brought victory to Napoli. Very, very unfortunate for Jurgen Klopp's Liverpool there. We can also see that uh, Liverpool were eliminated by Manchester United in the FA Cup fourth round and uh, the, they lost in the semi-final of the League Cup to Arsenal there. Well, this is very interesting that the fixtures are not real. This is uh, something odd that's happening there, but apologies for that. Now, uh, I am going to fast forward three more years into the future so that we can see how Jean-Michel Seri's transfer has impacted Liverpool. Today, the date is now 2nd of June 2021 and uh, we are going to see what happened in the Premier League first of all. In the first season, as we already saw, Manchester City were champions with Liverpool in second place. Then, season after that, Manchester United claimed the title with 90 points, which was 6 more than 2nd place Chelsea and 9 more than 3rd place Liverpool. So, Liverpool 
did not manage to uh, build on their first season and uh, slip down to third position, Tottenham completed the, the top four. Year after that, in season 2019-2020, Manchester United claimed another title, this time 98 points, and uh, Chelsea, Arsenal and Manchester City were in the top four, while Liverpool were in fifth position. Actually, they were on level uh, with Manchester City in terms of points, 77 for both teams, but they had one goal, worse goal difference, and this is because they didn't score enough, which is very surprising considering Jurgen Klopp's style of play. They had... Uh, they had 8 goals less scored and only 7 goals less conceded, so very very unfortunate and heartbreaking for Liverpool and Jurgen Klopp's side there. In the last season here we see that Manchester United claimed another title, Manchester City, Chelsea and Arsenal completed the top 4 while Liverpool slipped even further down into 6th position. But they qualified for Champions League which means that they won probably the Europa League that season and we'll have a look that, uh, at, that, at that in a second. But first of all, let's have a look at the Liverpool squad. We can see that Jordan Henderson is still the captain, while Vitolo is the vice-captain now. We are, we'll, we'll have a look at the transfers as well. And the key player is Roberto Firmino. If we look at the tactics screen, we can see Seri now in the defensive midfielder position. Um, Naby Keita is in the midfield with Henderson, while Song Hyung Min is on the left wing, left wing uh, of course, and uh, Mohamed Salah on the right with Roberto Firmino up top. It's interesting to see now who they have brought and uh, sold, so let's uh, head to their transfer screen. And we start with the first season, of course, Jean-Michel Seri is the only player there. Then in the next year, Naby Keita, who is an arranged transfer, joined them from Red Bull Leipzig. They also brought Iago Falke from Torino for £35 million. Pounds. Very interesting, uh, a Spanish attacking midfielder capable to play as a winger as well. In the outgoing section, they loaned uh, Jorginho Vinaldon to Milan and uh, they sold Conor Randall to Burton, Ragnar Klavan to Celta Vigo, John Flanagan to Leicester, Divo Corrigi to Inter was sent on a loan. Danny Inks was sold to Swansea. Okay, let's see. Year after that, Otavio was brought from Porto, Mark Bartra from Betis, Vitolo from Atletico Madrid, Bart Ramzelar, I'm not familiar with that name, he's from PSV Eindhoven. And uh, he is a central midfielder, quite impressive, quite impressive indeed, and uh, he has been quite successful for Liverpool apparently. On the other side, Emre Can was sold to Arsenal, Marco Gruic to Tigres, Dejan Lovren was sent to Inter on loan, Danny Ward was sold to Middlesbrough, and Harry Wilson was sold to Leicester. In the final season, the transfers were Andrija Balic, this is another new name for me, a uh, Croatian central midfielder. He seems to be very successful as well for the Liverpool team. Quincy Promise was brought from Spartak Moscow and Song Hyung Min from Tottenham on a free transfer. In the outgoing section we can see that Sadio Mane was sold to Arsenal for £17.75 million, pounds, which is very surprising. This is a very, um, a very cheap price for him. Uh, probably he was uh, nearing the end of his contract and that's why the sum was, uh, was not higher. Ryan Kent was sold to Aston Villa, while Ovie Jaria was sold to Burnley for £35 million. Pounds. So this is very, very interesting. Ovie Jaria, who is a, a, a Liverpool graduate, he was sold to... Actually, he's an Arsenal graduate, apologies. He, is, uh, he has joined Liverpool in 2014. So let's see here. He did not play any games for Liverpool in this experiment, but apparently he did, he did perform very well at Sunderland and Birmingham, which secured him this very big money transfer to Burnley, 35 million pounds, very surprising. Dominic Solanke did not, uh, did not really reach his potential and uh, was sold to Barnsley for less than a million pounds. And there were no other significant transfers there. Now we're going to see what happened in the English Cup competition, starting with the FA Cup. Here we are, the FA Cup was won by Manchester United in the first season, then Arsenal, Southampton and Swansea claimed the next three, uh, the next three trophies. No, no wins for Liverpool there. Let's see the League Cup as well, where Arsenal won the first one, Wolverhampton the second, Manchester City and Manchester United won the last two, so again no trophies for Liverpool here as well. We're now going to focus on the European competitions and see what happened in those two, uh, in the Europa League and Champions League competitions. 
In the first season, as we already saw, Liverpool lost the final against Napoli on penalties, they managed to beat Arsenal in the semi-finals, then uh, before that Dinamo Kiev in the quarters and Roma in the second knockout round. Year after that, Arsenal were successful in winning the Europa League after defeating Roma in the final, they also eliminated Shakhtar in the semis, Porto in the quarters and Zenit St. Petersburg in the second knockout round. In the third season, Tottenham won the Europa League, so we have here um, two successive English London teams winning the Europa League. This time they defeated Dortmund on penalties in the final after a goalless uh, regular time. They also defeated Paris Saint-Germain in the semis, Spartak Moscow in the quarter and uh, Roma in the second knockout round. In the final season we have a third English winner, this is Liverpool, so uh, apparently Jurgen Klopp managed to uh, to win the Europa League with Liverpool here, they eliminated, uh, they beat Valencia in the final that was played at the Allianz Arena. On their way to the trophy they eliminated Benfica, Villarreal and Kion. Switching now to the Champions League where the first season the Champions League was won by Tottenham. So very very surprising turn of events here, Tottenham winning the Champions League in season 2017-18 on penalties after beating Atletico Madrid in the final. They also defeated Manchester City in an All-English uh, semi-final, Chelsea in an All-English quarter-final and uh, Bayern Munich on penalties in the first knockout round. In the next year, Real Madrid won the, uh, the Champions League after beating Manchester City on penalties in the final. They qualified for that game after defeating uh, their uh, neighbours from Madrid, Atletico, 2-1 in the semis, Dortmund in the quarterfinals and Chelsea in the first knockout round. Liverpool were eliminated in the first knockout round as well by Bayern Munich. In the third year, Barcelona won the most, uh, the most prestigious competition in European football after beating Manchester United in the final 2-1. Barcelona qualified for that game after beating Real Madrid in the semis, Bayern Munich in the quarterfinal and Benfica in the first knockout round while Liverpool were eliminated by Real Madrid in the first knockout round again. In the last year of this video, Manchester City won the Champions League after beating Chelsea in an All-English final on penalties. Manchester City qualified for that game after uh, eliminating Manchester United in the semis on away goals. Inter Milan in, on the, in the quarterfinals and uh, Borussia Dortmund in the first knockout round on penalties. Now, I just want to quickly have a look at uh, Jean-Michel Seri and how did he perform in these last three seasons in terms of average rating, so let's have a look here. We can see that his average rating uh, is not really high, but um, he is playing regularly, so in the first season that he managed to play uh, a lot of games, it's uh, 6.95 with uh, a total of 33 games, 8 goals and 2 assists. In his next season, 25 games, 1 goal, 3 assists, and in the last season, 29 games, 2 goals and 3 assists. So, he's not, really, uh, he's not really shining very bright, but he's uh, probably an integral part of uh, Jurgen Klopp's team. And uh, in their last season, they did manage to win the Europa League, which qualified them for the Champions League. So, this is a big success uh, in any occasion. Now, before I finish this video, I also want to see who won the Ballon d'Or awards and so you can see on the screen right now that in 2018 that was Lionel Messi followed by Neymar and Gonzalo Higuain. 2019 the award went to Atua Griezmann with Luis Suarez and Lionel Messi in second and third place respectively. And in the final 2020 year, Lionel Messi claimed another Ballon d'Or award, this time Luis Suarez was second with Cristiano Ronaldo in third place. With that, this is the end of this video, don't forget to like and subscribe my, to my channel if you haven't already, that way you're going to receive notifications for when I upload new videos. You can also check out my social media, links will be provided in the description below. Let me know what you guys think about this experiment and what would you like to see next, I would love to hear from you in the comments. Once again, thank you for watching, until the next time, bye!